Hello everyone, how are you? I hope all of you are doing really good. So welcome to the CA Inter Cost Accounting RTP discussion. Yes, this RTP session I am uploading just one day before the examination. Why? The reason is very simple. The reason being that this RTP has been framed very well by the institute. It will uh, give you the right practice that is required just before the examination, right? And as I told you in the 1.5 day strategy video also that uh, instead of picking lots and lots of questions from the various material, you should stick to first the conceptual part, secondly the RTP of that attempt which is really important. So without wasting any time, let's start with it and the first part of the material costing, they have put it as a case scenario. Uh, something about the case scenario, sir, it will be from a practical situation only, right? Whatever the practical question is, uh, you have to attempt a practical question. The only thing is that they will ask you, they will give you the options for the various answers, right? Otherwise, it is a practical question only. The simple straightforward earlier, we used to get the practical question for 10 marks, for 8 marks. Here we are getting the case, uh, the, the same practical question in the form of a case study. Right, so let's start with the first question that is on material costing. Quickly we'll go through. Some of the questions are directly from the institute mat itself. So those questions will uh, skip out. Let's see, the first one, the purchase committee of A Limited has been interested with the uh, to review the material procurement policy of the company. The chief marketing manager has appraised the committee that the company at present produces a single product that is X. Now this X is what? This X is a finished good. It is not a raw material. You have to be very careful with the small things. By using two raw materials A and B in the ratio of 3 is to 2. So what they are doing is they are manufacturing a finished product that is X and for manufacturing of X A is used and B is used right. So these are what these are the raw materials being used in the ratio of 3 is to 2. Material A is a perishable product in nature and has to be used within 10 days from the goods received note. So it is perishable nature, right? Whatever the stock that you are keeping for material A, you have to consume that within 10 days. After 10 days, the material is going to get spoiled, right? Uh, otherwise, the material becomes obsolete. You will not be able to use that material after 10 days. So what is the ideal situation here? The ideal situation is that the company should keep a stock of 10 days only, right? A company should not be keeping the excess stock because if the company is going to keep an excess stock that is more than 10 days, obviously the company will be losing out on the stock, right? So the ideal situation is company should keep a stock that is equivalent to 10 days. That is the maximum stock the company should keep equivalent to 10 days, right? Okay, material B is durable in nature and can be used even after one year. Material A is purchased from the local market within one to two days. So if you talk about material A, what is the lead time? Lead time is one to two days uh, of placing the order. Material B on the other hand is purchased from the neighboring state and it takes two to four days to receive the uh, material in the store. So for B, what is the lead time? That is two to four days. Now, this is a very important question. This first one is a brilliant question. The purchase price per kilogram of the raw material A and B is 30 and 44 respectively exclusive of taxes. To place an order, the company has to incur an administrative cost of uh, 1200. That is, this is your ordering cost that is given to you. Whether for A, whether for B, the ordering cost is going to be 1200 per order. The carrying cost for material A is 15%. Why the carrying cost for material A is higher than uh, the carrying cost for material B? For B it is only 5%, for A it is 15%. Why it is higher? Because material A is a perishable product, right? You require the special conditions to store that uh, material so that it does not get obsolete. That is why the carrying cost of material A is higher because the chances, the chances of getting the material A obsolete are high, right? At present, material A is purchased in a lot of 15,000 kg to avail 10% discount on the market price. So this is at present, you are not following the EOQ. You are ordering 15,000 kg in one go, right? Why you are ordering at 15,000 kg? Because the supplier says, I'll give you 10%. Now we need to see that whether that 15,000 kg gets consumed in 10 days or not, right? 
uh, the GST applicable 18% and the input tax credit is available. So not our uh, problem here. The sales department has provided an estimate that the company could sell 30,000 kg in January 2024. Now this is what? This is for one month very careful sell 30,000 kg means we are talking about the finished good that is X so we are uh, the, the company is estimating that they will be able to sell the finished good X that is 30,000 kg in one month per month and also projected the same trend for the entire year right so can you tell me what will be the annual requirement then 30,000 multiplied by 12 the ratio of input output is 5 is to 3 what does it mean that sir if you input if you input 5 kg of raw material what will be the output of out of that the output will be 3 kg right the company works for 25 days in a month and carried the production evenly the following queries and calculations to be kept ready for the purchase committee's reference for the month of January 2024, what would be the quantity of the material to be requisitioned for both material A and B? What will be the quantity of material, raw material that will be required for this particular month? See, the quantity of the raw material will depend upon what? The quantity of the raw material will depend upon the number of units of the finished goods that you want to manufacture, right? The number of units that you want to manufacture is 30,000. Right. And we are saying that if you want to manufacture here 30,000 units, you require A and B in the ratio of 3 is to 2. So can you say that for this 30,000, I should be dividing this in 3 is to 2? No, because this is the ratio that is given and this is the finished good quantity that you want to manufacture and sell. There is no opening closing stock, no information regarding that. There is very important information that is given that is the input output ratio, right? You are getting an output of see what is given here the output of 3 kg. So what I'm going to tell you here is for an output of 3 kg, what is the input of raw material that is required 5 kg. Now what is the output that you want to manufacture output here means what the output here means the finished good. What is the quantity of the finished good that you want to manufacture and sell that is 30,000 kg. So how much of the raw material will be required sir? How much of the raw material will be required that is 50,000 kg of the raw material will be required which will then be distributed A and B in the ratio of 3 is to 2 that is 30,000 and 20,000. Any doubts? Clear? So this is the raw material that will be required 30,000 and 20,000. Now what is the EOQ for both the materials A and B? What is the EOQ? The For the EOQ, what you require? The annual requirement of the raw material. What is the annual? Now, this is the monthly requirement, sir. This is this 30,000 and 20,000 is what? You have to be careful. These are the monthly requirements. Right? These are what? The monthly requirements. And here, for the EOQ purpose, what you need? If you talk about the material A, what will be the annual requirement? Annual requirement will be 30,000 multiplied by 12. What is going to be the ordering cost? That is 1200 given, sir. Carrying cost. Carrying cost is 15% of the purchase price. And uh, what is the purchase price? That is 30 rupees. Right? So from here, you, you can calculate EOQ. Similarly, for B, you can calculate. Let's see the solution here. So this is uh, the first part that we have done 30,000 and 20,000 for EOQ material A 2 into annual consumption. This is the annual consumption ordering cost divided by the carrying cost per unit per annum, right? So this is the EOQ that you will be getting clear 13,856. So this is the answer that you will be getting here, right? Next one, what would be the maximum stock level of material A? Now, very important, two considerations are required here. One is the maximum stock level that we normally calculate, right? That is, what is the maximum stock level that we calculate? Reorder level plus reorder quantity minus minimum consumption into minimum lead time, right? Into minimum lead time. 
क्लियर वट इज द रीऑर्डर लेवल वट इज द रीऑर्डर क्वांटिटी मिनिमम कंजम्पन एंड मिनिमम लीड टाइम राइट सो फर्स्ट रीऑर्डर लेवल वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट सर हाउ कैन वी कैलकुलेट रीऑर्डर लेवल दैट इज मैक्सिमम कंजम्पन इन टू मैक्सिमम लीड टाइम मैक्सिमम लीड टाइम वट इज मैक्सिमम कंजम्पन सर वट इज द एनुअल रिक्वायरमेंट हेयर फॉर मेटीरियल ए वट इज द एनुअल रिक्वायरमेंट हेयर divided by the number of days that is 365 annual requirement divided by this now this is going to be the maximum consumption also this is going to be the minimum consumption also this is going to be the average consumption also right lead time is 2 days clear reorder quantity is uh, what is the reorder quantity here currently you are ordering 15000 kg of raw material in one go be very careful do not take eoq here eoq part is separate this part is separate here right so what is the reorder quantity here the reorder quantity is 15000 kg that is given in the question right minimum consumption into minimum lead time is there another part now another thing that we have to be very careful is that the maximum stock of a that you should be keeping is the stock equal to 10 days consumption right the stock equal to 10 days consumption so whatever is the lower here that you will consider see calculation of maximum stock level since material a is perishable in nature and is required to be used within 10 days hence the maximum stock level shall be lower of the two right for example for example if the 10 days consumption is 10000 units right that is in 10 days you will consume 10000 units but according to this formula that we have already studied this comes to 12000 units so what is the stock that you will keep sir if you are going to keep 12000 then what will happen sir you will consume 10000 in 10 days and the remaining 2000 will become obsolete and will be your additional cost isn't it will be your additional cost so you will have to keep the lower of the 10 days consumption or the formula which you we have learned very important part this part is very important right so stock equal to 10 days consumption what is the stock that is equal 30000 is the consumption of raw material a for 25 days right question says the factory works for 25 days in 25 days 30000 will be consumed so what will be there for 10 days 12000 kg so this is the maximum stock according to this another one reorder quantity plus reorder level minus minimum consumption into lead time reorder quantity is 15000 kg that is given in the question be very careful with this thing it is going to be 15000 kg reorder level maximum consumption into maximum lead time what is the maximum consumption per day per day 30000 divided by 25 30000 is the per month consumption and in one month the factory is working for 25 days that is why 30000 divided by 25 will give me per day consumption this will give me what this will give me per day consumption multiplied by 2 days this will become 2400 kg right maximum stock level 15000 kg that is reorder quantity reorder level just calculated minimum consumption will be 30000 by 25 as i told you that there is the even production taking place so maximum consumption minimum consumption everything will be same into the maximum lead time what is the maximum lead time here wait a minute sorry minimum lead time minimum lead time is one here not the maximum lead time minimum lead time clear one day so this becomes your maximum stock level as per the formula now you have to take the lower of the two lower of the two is you have to keep 12000 kg if you are going to keep 16200 kg then what will happen sir after 12000 kg in 10 days 12000 kg will be consumed now after that the remaining 4200 kg will be your loss will become obsolete right because it is a perishable product clear so this is a very important part next one calculate the savings or the loss in the purchase of material a if the purchase order quantity is equal to eoq right so if you order at eoq 
then will there be a savings or will there be a loss? This is the thing. Now, what is the EOQ here? The EOQ here is 13,856. Think of it as a layman. Sir, you ordered this material 13,856. In the just last part, we discussed that the company should not have a stock of more than 12,000 kg. This is the maximum stock that the company should have. Right? And here you are ordering 13,856. So one loss will be this. This will be a loss. The 1856 units will become obsolete. This will become obsolete, sir. Right? But let's see whether overall there will be a profit or a loss. What is going to happen? Right? See, the fourth part. Calculation of savings or loss in the material A if the purchase quantity is equal to AOQ. Now, purchase quantity if it is 15,000 kg, that is what currently company is doing. And if they order at EOQ, that is 13,856. Annual consumption, that is going to remain same. Number of orders, that is annual consumption divided by 12,000. Why 12,000 here, sir? Why it is the number of orders being taken as 12,000? Because you cannot keep more than 12,000. Right, that is the maximum stock that you can keep. So you cannot order more than that. This is an important point to be kept in mind here. Right, this is important. That is why the number of orders are going to be 30 because we have already told the company that you cannot order more than 12,000. They just want to know if there will be a profit or loss if they order at EOQ. They are not going to order at EOQ. Right, ordering cost. That is going to remain same. Carrying cost is 15% uh, of the purchase price. And here, be very careful with the purchase price. See what the question is saying. Question says he is getting 10% discount. Currently, currently, he is getting 10% discount on this price of 30 rupees. So the purchase price here is 27 multiplied by 7500. Right? That is the average quantity. This is 15,000 divided by 2. Clear? 15% of 30, 13,856 divided by 2. This is the average quantity that we take in the carrying cost, right? Purchase cost 27 into 360,000 and here 30 into 360,000 purchase cost will be impacted here. Purchase cost is a part of relevant cost here, right? And very important, loss due to obsolescence. There will be a loss, sir. In the current case, there will be a loss of 3000 units right there will be a loss of 3000 units because you cannot keep more than 12,000 and you are ordering 15,000 currently in the second case there will be a loss of 1856 units right 1856 units right uh, so because you are going to order at EOQ even then there is going to be a loss isn't it multiplied by 30 this is the number of orders this is what this is the number of orders sir in every order you are going to incur a loss multiplied by the price multiplied by the purchase price this is what this is the purchase price this 30 is what this 30 is your number of orders in every order you are going to incur a loss sir so this is going to give you the total cost here the total cost here that is the ordering cost carrying cost purchase cost and this loss so ultimately there will be a profit here uh, saving uh, the, uh, right purchasing at the present policy saves 3 lakh okay this is the total cost now at present policy you are going to save this amount right 321201 what will be there there will be if you order at EOQ there will be a loss sir that is why they have taken up B part yes there will be a loss because you will be incurring more cost if you order at EOQ you will be incurring more cost in that particular case right okay so the last one is what would be the minimum stock level of A that is pretty easy that I am leaving up to you people right that is easy that is easy sir reorder level uh, calculated average consumption into average lead time average lead time is 1.5 average consumption is simple uh, reorder level is maximum consumption into maximum lead time average consumption is what uh, average consumption is also going to be 1200 kg right 
So reorder period 1.5 days. Average consumption is maximum consumption plus minimum consumption divided by 2. Maximum consumption is same, minimum consumption is same divided by 2 will give you the average of that. Right? So 1200 from here you will get the minimum stock level. So this is a very good question sir. Now the second question, employee cost question, simple straightforward labor turnover part which we have already covered. Right? It, it is this the same question is there in uh, the books also. In my book also the same question is there. I've covered it in my regular course also. So this is a simple labor turnover question. So this I'm not taking up. Right? From that only you have to just calculate the parts. The third question over and under absorption n number of questions of the similar type we have done in the ICI module also there is a question uh, similar question right the only thing that you have to be careful in the over and under absorption is this part this is the production of finished goods this is the sale of finished goods so the when you are calculating the supplementary rate for supplementary rate what you need you need this sales you need this WIP the WIP will be 40,000 units that is equivalent units and the third thing that you need is the closing stock of finished goods. Closing stock of finished goods will be 1,10,000 minus the sale 90,000. Right? Please do not take the closing stock of finished goods as 1,10,000. This is a very common mistake that you can commit. Right? So please be very careful with this thing that this is not the closing stock of finished goods. Right, rest of the part is very simple. You have to calculate the actual overheads. You have to calculate the absorbed overheads. From this part, you will be calculating the absorbed overheads. Right, so this we have already uh, done. Question number four, activity-based costing. This is uh, directly from your module itself. I think this is in the practical question number four itself from the ICI module. So we are not going to take up. Cost sheet is also from the ICI module. Simple, straightforward question. Uh, the comprehensive question that we have done cost accounting system uh, this is again a question on recon this is a question on recon and this is a very good question in the recon you have to prepare uh, the financial books costing books and then reconciliation this kind of question we have already done in the ICI modules but be very careful in writing the figures in writing each and everything you have to be very careful with clear uh, question number seven, batch costing. This is a bomb question, bomb question. Very, very important question, batch costing. For this, what I'm going to do is, at the end of this video, right, I will play the video. I'll attach the video for, from my regular batch. I have covered the same question in my regular batch. I'll provide the cutting of that. I'll trim that. I'll provide the cutting of this particular question from my regular batch at the end of this particular video, right? I'll provide you with that because this is a brilliant question, sir. Brilliant question. Question number seven, calculations, fantastic. Uh, process costing, very simple question. One thing careful about, here they have mentioned that you have to solve it by FIFO method, right? If the question is silent as to whether to follow the FIFO method or the weighted average method, then I've told you that there is a rule to identify that whether you can do it by FIFO method or not. What is that rule? That rule is check for the opening WIP that whether the degree of completion is given or not. If the degree of completion is given, then you can do it by both the methods. But if the degree of completion of the opening WIP is not given to you, then you cannot solve it by FIFO method. Please do not make 150 exam uh, assumption that 100% for material and 50% uh, for labor and overheads, please do not make that assumption, right? In that case, if the question is silent, opening WIP DOC is not given to you, then do it by weighted average method. Because in that case, in case of weighted average method, you do not need the this degree of completion for the opening WIP, right? So please remember this rule in the examination, very important. Service costing question. This is a good question, sir. Again, a very good question from service costing. Important. Let's do it. Let's see, uh, see do it once. A LMV private limited operates the cab or the car rental services in Delhi NCR. It provided services to the offices of Noida, Gurugram and Faridabad. 
At present, it operates the CNG fueled cars, but it is also considering to upgrade these into electric vehicles. The following details relating to the owing of CNG and EV propelled cars are as tabulated below. Purchase price. If you go for a CNG car and if you go for an EV car, what will be the purchase price? What is the government subsidy that will be available? Life of the car is there. Residual value is there. Right. So from this part, you will be able to calculate the depreciation. You have to remove this government subsidy. Right. Please be very careful. Residual value divided by number of years will give you the depreciation. Right. Annual depreciation. Mileage 20 kilometers per kg, right? CNG is in the kg. There is a cylinder, CNG cylinder in kgs. So it gives an average of 20 kilometers per kg. Okay. And EV car is 240 kilometers per charge, right? Electricity consumption per full charge is 30 kilowatt hours, right? You need to charge the electric vehicles. All of you know that, right? And for one full charge, what is the electricity consumption? That is 30 kilowatt hour. CNG cost per kg is 60 rupees. Power cost, electricity cost per kilowatt hour is 7.6. Okay. Annual maintenance cost is given. Insurance is given. Tire replacement cost is given in every five years. That after every five years, you will have to replace the tires. Whether it is an EV car or whether it is a CNG car, the cost is going to be 16,000. Battery replacement cost in every eight years, right? So in the CNG car, there will be a battery that costs 12,000 only. But in the EV, that is a huge battery that runs on that battery. It costs 5,40,000. So after every eight years, you will have to replace the battery. Clear? Apart from the above, the following are the additional information. Average distance covered by the car in a month is 1500 kilometers. Driver salary is 20,000 per month. Garage rent per month. Share of office and administration cost per car is 1500 per month. You have been approached by the management of the LMV Private Limited for consultation on the two options, right? Calculate the operating cost of vehicle per month per car. Most important thing here is per month so what you have to do is you have to take every cost per month every calculation should be done monthly very careful please read till the last read the question till the last what is the requirement very 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 important sir clear per month per car for both cng and ev options okay so what is there? Firstly, the depreciation per month will be required. Depreciation per month will be required, right? Secondly, uh, what you will be required is depending upon the mileage, there will be a what? There will be the CNG cost and there will be the power cost that you will calculate depending upon the mileage, right? Okay. Annual maintenance cost, it will be divided by 12. Annual insurance cost divided by 12. Now, tire replacement cost, very interesting, sir. How will you calculate tire replacement cost? He says, the tires to be replaced after every five years. What is the life of CNG car? 15 years. So, in those 15 years, right? So, this is the life. Let's say this is the life of uh, one and this is, this is zero period. This is 15 years. This is the life. After every year, at fifth year, you will replace the tires, right? After every five years, you will be replacing. Here again, five years, you will be replacing the tires. One, two. Here, no need of replacement, sir. You are going to sell the car. That is the life, 15 years. So how many times in those 15 years of the CNG car, you are going to replace the tires? Two times. What is the cost per uh, replacement? 16,000 and 16,000. This is the cost per replacement, right? But this is the cost of 15 years. You need to calculate per month. Very careful, sir. Right? For this, uh, for uh, the EV, the life is 10 years. You are going to replace the tires only once. Only once, right? Similarly, the batteries after every eight years. So you are going to replace it only once. After eight years, you will replace it. After the next eight years, you will not have the vehicle, sir. Right? Because 16 years is not the life of the vehicle. So you will replace the battery once. After that, you are going to sell the vehicle. Clear? So there are various calculations which are to be done here. Let's come to question number eight. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन एज आई प्रोमिस आई प्रोवाइड यू एट द एंड आई अटैच द वीडियो फ्रॉम माई रेगुलर बैच ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर एट नॉट नॉट एट नाइन सी द डेप्रिसिएशन पर मंथ कार परचेज प्राइस माइनस गवर्नमेंट सब्सिडी माइनस रेजिडुअल वैल्यू डेप्रिशिएबल वैल्यू डिवाइडेड बाय लाइफ एनुअल डेप्रिसिएशन बट वी नीड पर मंथ डेप्रिसिएशन डिवाइडेड बाय ट्वेल्व यू विल गेट पर मंथ डेप्रिसिएशन राइट नाउ पावर और फ्यूल कंजम्पन एवरेज डिस्टेंस बींग कवर्ड फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड गिवन इन द क्वेश्चन वट इज द माइलेज ट्वेंटी किलोमीटर्स एंड टू फोर्टी किलोमीटर्स सो वट विल बी द के जी रिक्वायर्ड ही सेज सर ए ट्वेंटी किलोमीटर्स आर कवर्ड इन वन के जी ऑफ सी एन जी आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट सी एन जी सो इफ द इफ दिस कार रन फॉर फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड किलोमीटर्स इन अ मंथ हाउ मेनी के जी ऑफ सी एन जी विल बी रिक्वायर्ड राइट दैट इज सेवेंटी फाइव के जी विल बी रिक्वायर्ड वट इज द कॉस्ट पर के जी दैट इज सिक्सटी रुपीज सो टोटल फोर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड नाउ दिस इज वॉट दिस इज अ मंथली कॉस्ट ओनली सर This is a monthly cost because this fifteen hundred is what this fifteen hundred is per month. If you talk about EV, EV he says two forty kilometers in one charge, right? In one full charge. So for fifteen hundred kilometers, how many full charges will be required? Two forty kilometers in one full charge, right? Six point two five. Full charges will be required. What is the power consumption in one full charge? That is thirty kilowatt hour. And what is the cost per kilowatt hour? That is seven point six zero. So this will give you six point two five. Six point two five multiplied by thirty multiplied by seven point six zero. That comes to one four two five. right this is the power or the fuel uh, this cng cost clear 4500 and 1425 tire replacement life of the vehicle replacement interval 5 years so number of replacements will be two times and one time one time replacement 16000 total if you are going to replace it two times in the life of 15 years total cost will be 32000 and 16000 now this is a cost for the whole duration this 32000 will be incurred over a period of 15 years this 16000 will be incurred over a period of 10 years so what is the cost per year cost per year right then cost per month be very careful with this thing similarly the battery replacement cost similar ways but the battery is going to be replaced only once total replacement cost over a life of 15 years and this is going to be over a life of 10 years so cost per year and cost per month after that it's the simple cost sheet that they have prepared fuel or power consumption cost calculated annual maintenance cost is whatever is the cost given annual cost is given divided by 12 insurance cost tire replacement battery replacement calculated sir depreciation calculated driver salary already given per month garage rent office and administration already given per month clear any doubts but mark it as a very important question a very good question next one standard costing standard costing again a simple good question EML operates in a coal mining through open cast mining method explosives and the detonators are used for the excavation of coal from the mines the following are the details of the standard quantity of explosive material used for mining standard quantity okay SME 40 per kg detonators 20 per piece this is the rate that is given to you standard quantity for iron ore 2.4 kg per ton two pieces per ton standard quantity for overburden 1.9 kg per cubic meter and two pieces per cubic meter right this is what they are getting uh, from this the standard quantities are given okay the standard stripping ratio is 3 is to 1 that means the 3 cubic meters of overburden soil to be removed to get one ton of coal right so coal is covered by a soil you need to remove 3 cubic meters of the soil to get one ton of coal soil also has a value coal also has a value right during the month of december 2023 the company produces 20000 tons of coal and 58000 cubic meters of the overburden great sir 
the quantity of explosive materials used and paid for the month is as follows. This is the actual now that is given to you. This is now the actuals that are given to you, right? So you are required to calculate the material price variance, quantity variance and the cost variance. See, this is the actual quantity that is given to you. So you can calculate the standard quantity for actual output. Let's see. The table, sir, the simple table standard quantity for actual output. Okay, we'll just first do the calculation for this. For SME, what will be the standard quantity? SME means this part, right? This is your raw material basically. So for this, what will be the standard quantity? Iron ore, uh, coal, how much of the coal has been produced? 20,000 tons of the coal. Standard quantity is 2.4 per kg. Right, so SME is going to be 2.4 multiplied by 20,000. Right, and the next is for the overburden 58,000 is the actual output. Actual output, sorry, this is not actual quantity, this is actual output, sir. 58,000 into 1.9. 58,000, 58,000 multiplied by 1.9. Right. Similarly, if you talk about detonators, that is going to be two, two pieces and two pieces. Right. So that is going to be two into 20,000 plus two into 58,000. So this is going to be the standard quantity for actual output. Standard rate is given to you. Right. This is the standard rate that you have got. Actual quantity is given to you. Actual cost is given to you. Now you can calculate all the material variances, price variance, quantity variance, cost variance, whatever you want to calculate, you can calculate. Simple, right? So the only calculation is you have to be careful with this standard quantity for actual output. This is the only calculation that you have to be very careful about. Rest, everything is simple. Actual output, standard quantity per unit, standard quantity for actual production. Similarly, for detonators, they have calculated actual quantities there. So it's very simple. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, so we are done with the standard costing also market as important. The next one is marginal costing again, a very good one. The analysis of the cost sheet of a limited for the last financial year has revealed the following information for its product are direct material. Uh, containing the variable part direct material is also already going to be variable only there is not going to be a fixed part 30% of COGS direct labor 15% of COGS factory overheads 10% of the COGS plus 230,000 right general administration overheads 2% of the COGS plus 71,000 as fixed cost selling and distribution 4% of cost of sales cost of sales plus 68,000 last year 5,000 units were sold at 185 per unit this is the selling price that is given to you uh, you being an associate calculate the break-even sale in rupees profit and during margin of safety and the profit now the most interesting part here is the COGS is not there how can you calculate COGS sir the COGS is not given to you right so what is going to be the cost of the goods sold sir what is going to be the cost of goods sold? Let cost of goods sold be X. Let COGS be X. Now, what this cost consists of? This consists of a material cost. So what is material cost? 0.30X. This consists of labor cost. That is 0.15X. Any doubt? This is what? X is the total cost of the goods sold. This cost consists of what? Is me kya kya aata hai? Material cost is there, labor cost is there, then factory overheads are there, that is 10% plus 0.10x plus 2,30,000. This is the total factory overheads plus what is going to be the administration overheads, 2% plus 71,000, 0.02x plus 71,000. Calculate the value of x from here, right? Calculate the value of X from here. You will get the value of COGS. Any doubts? Clear? This is what is done here. See, COGS is equal to material plus labor plus factory overheads plus general administration overheads. I have taken this COGS to be X. From here, you will get the value of COGS. 
Now, selling and distribution overheads are given as cost of sale. What is cost of sales here? Cost of sales is COGS plus selling and distribution overheads, right? Let cost of sale be X. COGS you have just calculated. What is the selling and distribution overheads? Selling and distribution overheads are 4% plus 68,000. That is 0.04X plus 68,000. From here, calculate the value of X, you will get cost of sales, 8 lakh. Clear? Once you get this, then total fixed overheads already given to you. Variable cost, now you can calculate, right? 30%, 15%, 10%, 2%, 4%, total variable cost, 4 lakh 31,000. Now it is simple, PV ratio contribution by sales or sales minus variable cost by sales sales you have got 5000 into 185 is your sales right variable cost you have just calculated divided by total sales into 100 that will give you pv ratio for break even sales in the rupees is fixed cost divided by pv ratio right read the question very carefully he is asking for break even sale in rupees right rest everything now is easy you can do it, right? If the sales were 10%, what will be the profit? Sir, contribution will be 90% of the existing contribution, right? Minus the fixed cost, 75,600. This is easy. Clear? Now, uh, budgetary question. Budgetary question. Budgetary question, question is very interesting, sir. Budgetary question, I'll leave it to you people. Or should I do it? Let's do it. Let's quickly cover it up, okay? Uh, budget and budgetary control. M Limited is a public sector undertaking, produces a product A. The company is in the process of preparing its revenue budget for the year 2024. The company has the following information which can be useful. It has anticipated 12% growth in the sales volume from the year uh, 23 uh, of 4,20,000. So this year there will be a 12% growth rate. Okay. The sale price of 23,000 per ton will increase by 10% provided the wholesale price index increases by uh, 5%. So here, sale volume has increased by 12%, sir. Any doubts about the selling price? He says the selling price was 23,000. In this year, it will increase by 10% if the WIP increases by 5%. Read the fourth point. The WIP is 4%. That means the selling price is not going to change, right? The selling price is going to remain 23,000 only. Right, so total sales value in lakhs they are calculating. Similarly, to produce one ton of A, 2.3 tons of raw material are required. The raw material cost is given. Again, he says the price of raw material will increase by 10% if WIP increases by 5%. That means this is irrelevant now. This is ir this is irrelevant now. Increase is irrelevant, right? So the material cost existing and current year, previous year, current year. So quantity of raw material 2.3 into the quantity to be manufactured, right, into A. So multiplied by price per ton is going to remain same. So total cost. What about the wages? Now this wages is important. A total of 6,000 employees work for the company. The company works 26 days in a month. 85% of the employees of the company are permanent and getting a salary as per the five-year wage agreement. Uh, the earnings per man shift means an employee cost for a shift of eight hours is 3,000. Okay, that is for one day. For one day, he's earning 3,000 rupees. Excluding the benefits, the new wage agreement will be implemented from 1st of July and it is expected that a 15% increase in the pay will be given. So what is going to happen in the year 2024? First, let's talk about 2023. There are 6,000 employees. Out of that, 85% employees. 85% means uh, how many? 5,100 employees. These are permanent employees, right? They are getting what? They are getting 3,000 per day, right? So they will get 3,000 multiplied by 26 days. This is what the existing situation is, okay? In 2024, what is going to happen, sir, for this 5,100 employees? This is going to be divided into two parts. For the first six months, 26 days, that is one month into 12 months also you will have to do, right? For annual. Uh, here, for the first six months, the price is going to be 3,000. For the next six months, there will be an increase of 
right so the price will be three four five zero so this is how the wages will be calculated sir see wages to casual employees uh, sorry permanent employees 85 percent of six thousand that is fifty one hundred employees in the previous year 5100 into 26 days into 12 months in a year multiplied by 3000 rupees clear in the current year 26 days into 6 months 3000 for the next 6 months 3450 this is going to be the price right fine sir for the casual employees it is very simple straightforward casual employees is 850 depending upon the cpi right so last year cpi was says the cpi for 165.17 is the cpi the wage rate is 850 now the cpi has increased to 173.59 so what will be the wage rate 165.17 173.59 right so this will be the wage rate power cost is straightforward simple but be very careful with the power cost what is he saying power cost is 42 lakh for 7 lakh units that is 6 rupees per unit 6 rupees per unit 60 percent of the power is used for the production process directly related to the production volume so this 60 percent of the cost if in the current year in the year 2024 if your volume is increasing so this 60 percent of the cost will also increase right this 40 percent cost is not going to increase that is for employee quarters and administrative offices that is not going to increase only this 60 percent of the power consumption that is related to the production it will increase by 12 percent clear uh, 60 lakh for the safety and maintenance that is simple has paid 1 lakh 20 thousand for the purchase of diesel to be used in the car hired for administrative purpose the cost of diesel will increase okay in year 2023 what the company has done is they have hired the cars and incurred the diesel cost right but in the year 2024 there are two informations one is given here is gain 15 percent increase that is fine sir that is fine right the second thing that is going to happen is in this case what they are doing is the company has paid six lakh for the car higher charges excluding the fuel cost right 2024 the company has decided to reimburse the diesel cost to the car rental company they say instead of putting the diesel ourselves ask the company to put the diesel we will reimburse the diesel cost right the diesel cost will increase there is no doubt about it 1 lakh 20 thousand plus 15 percent the diesel cost will increase but we are going to reimburse that the five percent gst will be uh, there uh, and the GST input credit will not be available. So please careful with the GST part. Diesel cost 1.2 in the previous year. In the current year, car higher charges will be there. In the previous, in the current year, fuel reimbursement cost 1.38. And this is what the fuel cost is increasing by 15% as given in the question. GST on RCM on this part. 5% GST will be pay total car hire charges depreciation is reducing by 15 percent so total cost profit or the loss you will get right again a very good question on budgetary so please all those questions which i have marked as important please take it up very 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 carefully and next what you are going to get is you are going to get question number seven video from my regular batch all the best for your attempt guys this was rtp for may 2024 and please before the examination please 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 my request to all of you please do this rtp it is extremely important right so see you guys and continue to question number seven for which i am providing you with the link of uh, with the video of that part right so see you guys take care bye bye question number seven now this is very important i have given you the solution for this particular question also question number seven but this is a very good one now let's see arnav limited operates in the beverages industry where it manufactures the soft drink in three sizes of the large three liters medium 1.5 liters and small 600 ml bottles fine sir the products are processed in the batches fine the 5,000 liters capacity processing plant consumes electricity of 90 kilowatts per hour and a batch takes 1 hour 45 minutes to complete. Okay. 
only symmetric size of products can be processed at a time. So at a time, you can manufacture 5,000 liters of the soft drink, but you will be either manufacturing the large size or medium size or the small size, right? One type of manufacturing will take place because at a time, what is the capacity? Maximum capacity is 5,000 liters only. Fine, sir. The machine setup takes 15 minutes to get ready for the next batch processing. So what is the total time for one batch, sir? What is the total time? That is one hour. If you talk about the total time for a batch, if you talk about the total time for a particular batch, it is being divided into two parts. One is the production time and another one is the setup time. One hour, 45 minutes is the production time. Right. And what is the setup time? That is 15 minutes is the setup time. That means for one batch, the total time is two hours. Right. Fine, sir. During the setup, the power consumption is only 20 percent. The current price of the large, medium and small are 150, 90 and 50 respectively to produce a liter of beverage to manufacture one liter of beverage. 14 liters of the raw material W and 25 ml of, be very careful where uh, the terminology liter is used and where the ml is used, right? Of material C is required, which cost 0.5 and 1000 per liter respectively. Now rate is given per liter. Quantities are given ml. Here also 600 ml, right? So be very careful with this thing. This is, this is one area that will definitely ask you for the mistakes. Okay, after that 20 direct workers are required. The workers are paid rupees 880 for 8 hours shift of the work, right? 880 for 8 hours, right? That I can say it is uh, rupees 110 per hour. Yes, sir. The average packing cost per bottle is rupees 3. Power cost is rupees 7 per kilowatt hour. Other variable cost are rupees 30,000 per batch. Fixed cost administration and marketing is 4 crore 90 lakhs. The holding cost is rupees 1 per bottle per annum. The marketing team has surveyed the following demand of demand. Demand of what? Bottles. Uh, large 3 lakh bottles, medium 7 lakh 50, small 20 lakh bottles. Calculate the net profit or loss for the organization and also the EBQ. Right? Fine, sir. Now, how will you find out, sir? What is uh, required if you want to calculate the profit or loss? Now, what he is, he is asking is, he is asking us to calculate the profit or loss. Right? He is asking us to calculate the profit or loss. How can you calculate the profit or loss? The first thing that you take is the sales. Right? For all the three bottles, you will take the sales, sir. Minus the cost. Right? Now, how to take up the cost? If you uh, want to talk about the cost, how to take up the cost, sir? In the cost, let's talk about first the material cost. How will you calculate material cost? What is uh, the information that is given? He says to manufacture one liter of a beverage, 14 liters of material W will be used. So can you tell me what is the total uh, liters to be manufactured? What is the total liters of uh, the soft drink to be manufactured, sir? Sir, that will depend depend upon what? That will depend upon the demand. But the demand is given for the bottles, right? So, if you talk about the large bottle, 3 lakh bottles are demanded. That means how many liters you will have to manufacture? Sir, this large bottle is having 3 liters, right? So, multiplied by 3 you will have to manufacture 9 lakh liters so that you are able to fulfill this demand of 3 lakh bottles, right? Now, medium, 7 lakh 50 thousand bottles are demanded. So, how many liters you will have to manufacture multiplied with 1.5, multiplied with 1.5, that is 11 lakh 25 thousand liters you will have to manufacture with 11,25,000 liters, you will be able to make 7,50,000 bottles which are demanded. 20 lakh small bottles multiplied by 600 ml. So 600 ml is 600 divided by 1000, that is 0 0.6 liter. Right? Be very careful with this. That is 12 lakh liters you will have to 
manufactured isn't it so the material demand is dependent upon the number of liters that you will be manufacturing any doubts in this thing come here the quantity of material w and c required to meet the demand demand is how much 3 lakh 7 lakh 50 and 20 lakh quantity per bottle right now this demand is in bottles not liters so what is the output that is required 9 lakh 11 25 and 12 lakh now to manufacture one liter what is the material w required 14 so what is the total material w required this is quantity not value this is the quantity sir 1 crore 26 lakh 1 crore 57 lakh 50 and 1 crore 68 lakh right after that material c input required that is 25 ml 25 ml sir that is 0 0.025 liter 0 0.025 liter 0 0.025 liters right multiply it with the liters you will get the material c required be careful where ml is given and where the liters is given you have to be very 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 careful with this thing right because that is one area that can always always you know that will be pushing you towards the mistakes fine that's fine sir now once the material quantity is uh, identified the rate is given 0 0.50 and 1000 per liter no issues in that right so this is done and with this what uh, they have taken here is when they are calculating the calculation of profit or loss for the batch here the material cost whatever the quantity is identified in working note multiplied by 0.5 quantity multiplied by 1000 any doubts right fine sir now next what you will be having sir the next cost will be labor cost now the labor cost is dependent upon the number of hours isn't it it is dependent upon what it is dependent upon the number of hours how to identify the hours now sir he says we are paying rupees 880 for 8 hours shift of the work fine sir and a batch takes 1 hour 45 minutes plus 15 total 2 hours that means a worker is working for 2 hours on a batch any doubts in this thing but how to identify what will be the number of batches that will be manufactured because sir the hours are given for a batch not for liter the number of hours, 2 hours for which the labor is working, that is 2 hours is given for a particular batch. So that means we need to find out what is the total number of batches that are being manufactured. According to the total number of batches, we will be able to identify the total number of hours for which the labor is to be paid. Then we will multiply it with the rate. Just try to understand what I am saying, sir. Sir, he says we are paying on the basis of number of hours for which the labor is working. Now, otherwise, no other information is given the labor on one batch. On one batch, the labor will be working for two hours. So, if you don't know that what is the total number of batches that will be manufactured, how can you identify the total number of hours for which the labor will be working? Can you? No, sir. Right. So the next now the first step is to calculate what is the total number of batches for that what he has done here. See batches is dependent upon what how many bottles you are manufacturing. He says first thing the maximum number of bottles that can be processed in a batch. The capacity is 5000 liters. Right. If you talk about the large bottle sir uh, three liters is equal to one bottle and the question says at a point of time you will be manufacturing only one type of a bottle so if maximum capacity is 5000 liters so how many bottles can be manufactured sir one triple six with 1.5 liter the maximum bottles that you can manufacture is 3333 with 600 ml 8333 right small fractions have been ignored now what will be the number of batches that that will depend upon the demand if you have a demand of 3 lakh uh, bottles right and in one batch in one batch you manufacture 1666 bottles in one batch right so what is the number of batches 180 similarly for medium 225 and 240 the batch is dependent upon how many bottles you are able to manufacture how will you decide how many batches sir 
whatever the demand is, we will manufacture according to that. The demand is given in the bottles. So you have to identify that in one batch, how many bottles you are manufacturing, right? 1,666. So if the demand is for 3 lakh bottles, how many batches you will have to process, right? That is 180, 225 and 240. Done, sir. So how will you identify the labors? Number of batches, 180. Hours required per batch, 2 hours. That is 1 hour 45 minutes for the manufacturing and 15 minutes for the setup time. Fine, sir. Total hours required, 360, 450 and 480. Number of man shifts required. That if in one day a worker is working for 8 hours, right? And total hours required is 360. So how many? This 8 hours is considered as one shift, right? So 360 hours, how many shifts? Right, that comes to 45 shifts. This is for one person. This is for one person, one individual. Right, and there are 20 workers who are working. So total shifts will be, and for this particular one shift, for one shift, we are paying 880 rupees. Right, this is for one shift of eight hours. Right, so 8 hours, 1 shift, if the total time required is 360 for large bottle, how many shifts will be required? That is 45 shifts per person, right? For 20 workers, 900, 1140, 1200, clear? So this is about the labor cost. This is how the labor cost. Now labor cost will be this number of shifts into 880. This multiplied by 880. This multiplied by 880, that will give you the labor cost, sir. That will give you the labor cost. Direct wages, number of shifts into 880. Packing cost is given, sir, directly. That is, uh, I think, 3 lakh per uh, packing cost. What is packing cost given? Okay, we are done with the uh, material cost, labor cost. Packing cost is rupees 3 per bottle. So, if you are going to manufacture 3 lakh bottles as per the demand, so what will be the packing cost? 9 lakh, right? 3 rupees 3 per bottle. Now, coming to the next one. Uh, packing cost is done. Power cost. How the power is being consumed, sir? He says, if you are processing a batch, during the production, during the production of 1 hour 45 minutes, right, how the power consumption is taking place? Let's see. So the power consumption is divided into two parts. One is during the production and the second uh, part is during the setup time, right? Now, during production, the uh, what is the production hours? Production hours is 1 hours, 1 hour, uh, 1.75 hours we can take. That is uh, 45 divided by 60. Yes, 1.75 hours. Right, 1.75 hours and the setup time is 0 0.25 hours. Fine, sir. Now, during this, what is the power consumption? It is 90 kilowatts per hour. 90 kilowatts per hour. Right? This is the production. I'm talking about one batch as of now. I'm talking about one batch. And here, what is the power consumption? That is 20% of 90 kilowatt. Right? That is 20% of 90. That is 18 kilowatt per hour. Right. So can you tell me uh, and what is the power rate, sir? How much of the first, how much of the power consumption will be done? Total power consumption will be 90 kilowatts is per hour. So 1.75 multiplied by 90, that will be 157.5 kilowatt. Right. For the total batch during the production time, how much? 157.5. And during this, what will be during this, sir? During this will be 0 0.0.25 multiplied by 18. That is 4.5, 4.5 kilowatt. This is what will be the power consumption. And what is the rate that is given multiplied by 7 multiplied by 7. Okay. If you want to take the rate later on, one thing you can do is this is for one batch. This thing is for one batch. You can multiply it with the total number of batches to calculate the total consumption. 
let's see here the power cost where the power cost is taken power consumption sir the number of batches hours required per batch right total hours required 315 right <clears throat> power consumption per hour that is 90 kilowatt so multiplied with the total number of hours you will get this total power consumption right and per batch consumption i have shown you now what you can do sir in this part only the per uh, you can multiply it with the batch number of batches if you multiply it with 180 157.5 multiplied by 180 that will give you 228350 that is the total power consumption that is what is there you can calculate in any ways first you calculate what is the total power consumption for one batch then multiply it with the number of batches as simple as that right or first they have calculated the total hours required for total number of batches anyways you can do it similarly for the setup time we have calculated sir 4.5 we have already calculated multiply it with the number of batches if you multiply it with 180 4.5 multiplied with 180 sir. one second that will give you 810 right this is what is there 810 total power consumption right and when you are going to take the rate there you can take the rate that for processing time whatever the total number of hours are multiplied by 7 for setup time total number of hours multiplied by 7 that will give you the power consumption other variable cost other variable cost is 30,000 per batch so how many number of batches you know sir total variable cost profit or loss fixed cost net profit fixed cost is given in the question sir right so these small calculations were very very important material labor number of batches number of bottles power consumption right so this is one of the most important different type of a question i told you this that there is a different type of a question now coming to this uh, ebq what is ebq sir in the second part he's asking you to calculate the ebq what is the annual demand of the bottles that is 3 lakhs 7 lakh 50 and 20 lakhs and uh, what is the setup cost during the setup the power cost will be there yes sir other variable cost will be incurred yes sir the very fixed obviously sir the variable cost will be incurred during that for each batch that is 30,000 rupees the setup cost is per batch so whatever the cost is incurred per batch it will be taken up right for every batch what is the variable cost that you will be incurring 30,000 that is given now packing is after the batch has been processed and that is per bottle that is not per batch right setup cost is dependent upon per batch sir because you are setting up there will be a variable cost that will be incurred so total setup cost that is this part uh, holding cost is given one rupee so from here you can calculate the ebq of the bottles clear any doubts in this thing no so please do this question carefully once again understand the small things once again that how the power consumption is there what is the information that is given what is given regarding the liters what is given in ml what is to be calculated from the bottles what is to be calculated from the batches so there are a lot of components that are working together in this particular question right so mark it as important and do it again in case you find any difficulty please let me know Right, I have explained all the basic parts of this question. 